Hello, everyone. Good morning. Thank you, everyone, for attending the Tutex NUMA session. Um, so just a quick recap of what I'm doing here. So um, I'm trying to develop a new interface for Futex called Futex2 that is an ongoing effort to solve long-term issues in Futex. Uh, Futex Way TV that it there was... No issues in Futex? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is, uh, this is called True Wait for Multiple Futex was merged last year. And one thing that we still need to solve is the NUMA bottleneck because on the current side, you only have a single uh, hash table. So on the current side, we only have one hash table uh, to uh, to give the entries for the futex. So every operation will be registered on a single hash table, and this hash table will be only on in one node. So that means that every other node will have a cost to access uh, this information and to do in Futex operations. And on this new Futex to design, we will, we will have a just uh, once it's called per operation, no more multiplexing, uh, no one's like that anymore. And this is designed to solve a bunch of if issues like wait for multiple uh, variable size Futexes and the NUMA thing. So uh, just to, to show how the, uh, the proposed syscalls, we have few text wait and wake, nothing special here, just the operation in a, in a normal syscall. Uh, this is the wait V that is our merger. This is the requeue uh, syscall. Uh, this is important to show because here we can see that we have six arguments. So that means that we can't add a new argument for the node ID that we want to operate on. So we need to put this node, uh, put this ID somewhere else. And this is the proposed interface. So we will have uh, different structures for uh, being normal aware. Uh, but the next year, because of uh, should be like the size. So we will have H, 16, 32, and 64. And you basically put together uh, the few text value and the hint. Hint here uh, basically means uh, uh, my, if you use minus one, that means that you want to operate on the current node. And if you use something between zero or maximum nodes, that means that you want to operate. At, uh, this is how you're specifying on which node you want to use. Why would you want to do that? Uh, I don't I mean, know. you're on a node already. So it's natural that you actually uh, go on the node. So you never want to do, wait on a few days on another node? Uh, so node specific stuff is, is useful if you have uh, memory regions specifically hard bound to that node. Okay. So if, if you have an explicit memory layout and, and you know this lock is associated with the data that lives on that node, then it makes sense to do explicit binding. Otherwise, the minus one makes sense. Um, and then do note that the minus one will get overwritten. As soon as you actually do the wait, it'll write the actual node number that you landed on in this value so that the wake can find the right hash table. So then every new wait, uh, Cisco will have to first reset the hint. Otherwise, uh, things will not work as expected. Okay, so the kernel will write that? Yeah. Okay. If, um, if you say scribbles it after wait, and then it will not, uh, then wake will not work. Then you'll just get stuck indefinitely. Okay, uh, makes sense. Um, and this was an example that I came up of a bunch of other nodes waiting on a single few tags on node two. Uh, just to, to look like how it looks like, uh, how it uh, appeared in the code. Um, so yeah, this is the proposal. And uh, it's good to know that about the, the thing to overwrite the hint. Um, yeah, any more questions, comments? No, not at the moment. So do you think this looks like 
on the right path. Yeah, let's see where this goes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, Peter, do you want to share something else? Uh, so um, the reason that we need to write this hint is um, it's so it's minus one, and you can find the current node on wait, and then you queue yourself in the hash table. But then at wake time, you have no idea which of the many node hash tables you're in. So you either need to iterate the whole thing, at which point you're slow again, or you need to have stored the actual node number. And that's where the, the extended thing is useful for, because then you can store the node number, you know where to go look, and things remain fast. Okay. And uh, if you don't use the Snuma interface, will you just wait? Uh, sorry, if you don't use the Numa flag, you will just wait on a default uh, table that yeah, can be the first. Then, um, so we either have a, a shared hash table like we have now, or we do a address hash over the other thing. It doesn't matter. As long as there's a deterministic mapping for no Numa to whatever table. OK. Right. Um, and uh, does anyone know how can I like benchmark, how I can test if this uh, is solving? Benchmark. Sorry? Curve few text. Curve bench few text. OK. Uh, I think I just need to hack to add the, the new one part. Yeah, it's like, it's the old API. So, well, old, uh, old <laughs> API. one. Yeah. But yeah, if, if you can extend that for, for new awareness, that would be that would be nice just to overall have it. Okay. Um, okay, more questions, comments? No, not at the moment. Um, so at the time, I think it was Oracle. They they um, obviously have their database thing. Um, yeah. And they are NUMA aware. And they were using the semaphore, the system five semaphore stuff because Futex was absolutely crap for them. Um, so it would be nice if some of the Oracle people could test out this stuff once you have working patches. They might have um, constructive feedback, but this was oh, over 10 years ago when Chris Mason was still with them. Right. Uh, but yeah. I know they were users of, of this. Oh, we can ask Willie. He will find the right people. All oh, right, Willie's with them again. Indeed. OK, and apart from Oracle people, anyone else that I could uh, get in touch with, get some feedback on? With, with, the, with, the, with the numbers, like obviously, like, like the benchmark, you will expect better numbers and all that. Well, it would also be interesting to see the actual um, um, hits and misses from uh, remote accesses worldwide. That, that would give a, a nice contrast between the final numbers and what's actually the improvement you're actually doing, which is more in the locality. OK. So um, getting the hit and miss. Okay. What, uh, what kernel are you facing this on? Oh, this is just. I don't. I don't have slides. I don't have uh, the code yet. But I will start on top of six. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Because um, if you have any, yeah. since this is new interface, I think you just have to hack up something. Um, I know Thomas has has newer machines. It sh shouldn't be too hard to just hack up a very simple test case um, to see that it actually does behave better than the old Numa, uh, the old Futex. Yeah, so I mean, that was a comment for you, but um, <laughs> like I said, we have thousands of machines that are all Numa nodes, and um, we have six plus six O ish. Uh, so if you do have code based on that, um, I would be interested to try for, uh, you know, oh, to, to, to run your, on your on your hardware? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, or I can give you the contact after the meeting. Mm -hmm. This okay. is David Law? Sorry? David Lore talking? No, no. Oh, this is Dragon. It's down to reach. Sorry? And I do impressions, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
uh, sorry, Peter, uh, can you repeat what uh, you said before? Oh, no, I was asking who was talking. Because I'm virtual, I can't see you all. Sorry, you were asking what? And I, I was asking who was talking because I can't see you speaking. Oh, yeah, because I know. Before that, you were talking about uh, something remote, I think. Uh, yeah, so you, you just have to write a simple little benchmark. Um, uh, for for example, just create two threads, uh, pin them on a, a separate node each, and then run them without Numa flag, and then run it with Numa flag, and then you should see some improvement already. Okay. Um, and I mean that's that's simple enough to to write and to test this interface with, and then once it works and and it shows um, improvement, you can throw it out to the world and ask people to go have a poke at it. Okay. And so also note that um, in, in the real world, um, you really have systems where you, you really have just a handful of prefixes, and you have lots of threads hammering at them, but you don't have the, really the situation where you have a lot of few texts and just a few threads um, trying to acquire a lot. So it's usually like the, the more realistic uh, scenarios to test is like not so many few texts and a lot of threads. Okay. Um, I have one other question. Uh, uh, the CNA people, um, those that do the NUMA aware spin lock thing, they're from Oracle as well, isn't it? Right. Yeah, so their primary use case was the Futex bucket lock, I think. Futex what, sorry? The, the, the bucket lock. Okay. Um, well, one more other thing that I that I have to ask is on the uh, Futex source code, uh, the Futex hash table is allocated using this function, a, lo a lock large system hash. And uh, this is not very used in the kernel, and this is not numaware. Um, so I was wondering if I could ju just use a kmalloc node, something like that, or if you text need to use this. This is at early boot up. Sorry? This is at early boot up. Oh, so this is, uh, but, but sorry, what, what, what does that mean in the context? Uh, the allocations are done at, at, at boot up. Like, it's, it's, it's very early in the lifetime of the machine. OK. That's way before user space. Yes. Yeah. OK. Oh, because we need to ensure that this is ready when user space comes. Yes. OK. Um, and doing it after you have the first Futex user would be outright stupid. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, so we need to uh, give this a lock large city hash a Numa, um, Numa wireless, right? Because right now I can't specify a node, and th that has, we, we don't have like a locate large city hash node right now. Yeah, you still have to to make the hash large enough. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, the the problem is uh, the larger the, the the larger number of CPUs on an on a node, which can be quite big. Um, if your hash size is too small, you have hash a lot of hash hash collisions, obviously. Yeah. And the more the more um, uh, CPUs you have, or uh, thre uh, CPU threads you have per node, you know, the more likely the collision is going to happen, and that's what we want to avoid in the hash. Okay. And so, I mean, ideally, ideally we have uh, only one Futex in a hash bucket. Okay. I think that was also part of what, when you were um, doing the new awareness for Futex one thing. Um, it was also you were trying to, to um, have it have that the hash table size um, kind of fit one to one to, to to avoid collisions. Yes. Yeah, I remember that that was integrated into your your new malware stuff. Right. So we would have a for each node, and then a lock latest speaking hash. For each node, yeah. So, so probably you can 
start with um, um, sizing it um, uh, 256 times um, CPUs per node or something like that. I would start out with that and, and see how, how, how well that works. I mean, we can uh, make it lower sure. Um, anyway, but uh, just from a gut feeling, uh, using the not using num possible CPUs for each node hash. Um, for the global hash, you need to do that, but for the node hash, it's probably sufficient to have a number of CPUs per node. I mean, it, it doesn't matter much. Okay. It's anyway a huge waste of memory. Yeah. Um, but the first node would have two tables, one for the global footex and one for the local footex, or we can we just use the same table? It's a good question. Uh, because other, otherwise, maybe the global thing can mess up the determinism of the local thing. But I mean, I think everything will be already kind of uh, busy. You know? So it's not <clears throat> not entirely clear to me at the moment is how you, how you're going to find the the waiters again. The way what? Sorry. The, the waiter. Um, so add so add wait futex wait system call. Um, it reads the hint. If it is minus one, it overwrites it with the current node. Then it uses that node to find the hash table and queue itself into. On Futex wake, it looks at the hint, finds the node number, and goes find this Futex in that table. If it's not there, tough cookie. Um, that's... Oh my god. <laughs> that's not going to end up well. Only if user space is stupid, and then they get to keep the pieces. Yeah, but you have to... <sighs> yeah, I agree, Peter, but um, I'm just thinking about all the cleanup corner cases we have, uh, and you're adding another five gazillion to it. Well, that's the name of the game, isn't it? Um, and and it's 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 can simple we, enough. Can we just design something less stupid than Futex? <laughs> no, <laughs> we can try worse than Futex, but <laughs> no, uh, yeah. Now, I mean, it's fairly simple. We we can bound a hint from zero to number nodes. If it's outside of that range, it's in an immediate e inval. If it's inside the range, we can find the actual hash table. If we just don't find anything to wake in the hash table, we're done. Right. So, so but that means that all uh, that all uh, participants who share a few tags have to agree on the node. Well, there is only one who does a wait. No, you can have multiple waiters. Um, yes, but uh, the first one will set the hint, and afterwards, it's already set. Yeah, but um, the minus one is going to end up in a in a real fuck up situation because that's racing badly. So I wouldn't go there and say you have to 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 set the numen out. Yeah, so we can have the kernel um, set it back to minus one when the last waiter is woken because we know that, right? Uh, 
Yes. Kinda. We know it from a criminal side, but you can still have a, another waiter coming in at the same time being stuck on hash bucket lock. Um, yes. So, yeah, but I think we can make it work. Yeah, but keep it simple, stupid. Well, this is the stupidest I could come up with. <laughs> yeah, but... but uh, I mean, let user space. I mean, even if the the, the 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 interface on the uh, on the library ABI allows the minus one let user space fill in a node number before it goes uh, uh, into the Cisco. It can't because it doesn't know if it's the first waiter or not. Uh, so we we can set it at mutex in it when there is no concurrency you can set it to minus one i'm but much I comfortable with that because you have uh i mean the 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 node information is we can't do an um, we can't do an atomic update to it. Uh, I mean, atomic along with the with the actual futex state. We can on sixty four bit, perhaps. Compare and exchange eight B, a sixteen B, the double white thing, which is not available on. On, 30, on 32 bit. It is. Then it's called Compare and Exchange 8B. It's just not available on i386 and such. And then they don't, they don't get to play. They don't have NUMA either. Fair enough. So, I mean, if it's, if the no thing is part of the Futex states, then I'm fine with the minus one. So the idea would be to atomically update the hint and the futex value of the thing. Yes. You, I mean, you have to, I think. If you have them separate, all hell breaks loose. You're never, you're never going to be happy about that. I just was wrapping my brain around the, the stupid 32-bit limitations for uh, for the print K locking I was doing, and uh, so on. On 64-bit, I can't have the sequence tracking in the in the same value uh, in the same atomic long, uh, but on 32-bit, it doesn't work obviously. Um, so I had to do it separate, and it's. Yeah, but the big advantage is we can make a Futex Numa depend on an architecture having a double wide atomic. Yes. Not so much for print K. You can't say, well, well, sorry, we can't print if you don't have a double wide atomic. And then Linus will just laugh at your face. Peter, I agree with you. I just, I, I just, the, 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 the bad memory just came back. <laughs> and, and, um, Trying to map that into Futex code, oh my god. Yeah. Uh, but wait, uh, so the user space is the one that set the, set the Futex value, and you were talking about the kernel space is setting the heaped value. After the last. Oh, after the last one? No, no, no. Even, I mean, if it's. If it's in the same state, then user space can actually use the minus one as a, as a default, as long as it's not, as long as it's minus one. I mean, you have to preserve the node information yeah. on locking yeah. Yeah. or on the trilock or whatever you do. Um, but 
once you're in the kernel, the kernel uh, can obviously race with user space, uh, but it does today. But you want to have the node information. You can update it atomically uh, and race against the unlock in user space, which is what we have today. Yeah. Uh, so, so there's no. It's 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 not any different from the from the atomic operations we do in the user space value today. So at least what we do on the... Maintain the, the current semantics in that case. Yes. So so you just add more information to the state. Yeah. yeah. And and all we, all we need uh, for the... Uh, I mean, we're usually talking about um, robust few texts today. Uh, so you need enough space for the PID and the node, which is, which even should work on 32-bit because uh, we have limited PID space on 32-bit. On, on but um, happy to or 32-bit completely. So one more addition to this struct Vutex X that's displayed on screen, it needs an explicit alignment to double size. The implicit alignment there doesn't work. Okay. It has to be aligned and packed. Yeah. You actually want a union there inside the struct. Um, and all atomic operations have so, so you have want to have a U64 uh, a union U64 atom and a struct with the two values and all atomic operations have to be on the atom uh, mm, okay. uh, member of the union. So we can otherwise do that. Yeah, okay. so you can't you can't change it in the your memory representation you use for doing the atomic but you always have to do the 64-bit atomic okay well that's so, only for access 32 are we going to do access 64 for giggles um, i know i know people want a 64-bit few tax value screw them <laughs> <laughs> fair enough i mean what what you can do uh, is how many NUMA nodes do we have? Ah, up to a thousand or something. When we go uh, four billion, we're an issue. <laughs> thousand NUMA nodes? No, I mean that's kind of stupid, but yeah, sure. Um, so we could do 60, 16 bits of NUMA node and, and 48 bits actually for the value. I mean, we can do a double 64 wide atomic. Oh no, what for? Uh, just for giggles. I mean, we yeah. have the instruction. Yes, but, but I mean, uh, Remember the discussion back then when uh, Drapper tried to sell this and he didn't even have a use case. Yeah, but that was Uli. Yeah, so is there a use case? Um, the, last, uh, the last I heard of this was Florian. He, he um, asked for a 64 wide for a reader-writer state or something. I don't know. I forget. Um, the the answer is always basically just use the the 32 bit for the 32 bit part of the 64 bit uh, variable for the the atomic and and the the other the rest of it in user space. So you don't really need the 64 bits in in the kernel. Yeah, but if you have um, if you have state information in the value. You you have to use 64 bit anyway, so there's no way around it. So we have we can't do the kernel state on 32 bit and 
have user space atomically switching the 64, that's yeah. not going to work well. Um, yeah, whatever. Yeah, and I think it was the wine people, they wanted eight. Anyway, the, the ABI is, is simple enough, and we can limit support to everything that has the uh, instructions. We already have conditional few tech operations. Yeah, how many how many of the relevant architectures do have uh, uh, a sixteen bit wide atomics? I'd have to look them up, but I think most of the ones we care about. It's like power. It's sixty four. Um, so I think Power can do it, S390 can do it, ARM64 should be able to do it. I'd have to ask Will or no, but um, there's quite a few who can do it. I mean, Slab uses it as well. Right. Yeah. But we can um, do this later, as long as the, the ABI that we propose now can basically do it, we can... We can is not supported for a while. Right. Yeah. Fine with me. Uh, okay. Uh, does anyone want to complain anything else about Fudex? Complaining about Futexes is useless. <laughs> I just want to reiterate that like it would be it would be really useful to in, in the patches in the next version based on um, feedback here um to also incorporate the change to the the, the benchmark. Okay, that, sure. Because it's it's really integrated. And it's it's a really nice way to just test real quick and like, get get useful data. Yeah. And 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 Futex too, like even not even the the way V stuff that that's still. And also, like, it would be nice to have that too. At, at birth, right? Yeah. Okay. Much. Okay. I'm going to go bail. I'm going to go play with Arnaldo. Oh, okay. Have fun. Have fun. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Um, okay. I think this is it. Uh, thanks everyone for attending. Mm -hmm. And in some weeks or months, we have some pets to, to test. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs>